Hey, it's Peter from Piss Imported, and today's video is all about shimming the gearbox. We'll talk a little bit about determining what the correct shim is, along with what tools you need to complete the job. So here goes. The first thing that we want to discuss is the tools that you're going to need to perform this job. You're definitely going to need a dial caliper of some sort. I suggest you get a digital one. It makes it a lot easier to read when you're measuring the width of your shims. As you can see this one does millimeters it also you can toggle in inches if you'd like you're also going to need a set of feeler gauges um, the feeler gauges that you get should go down to 0 0.05 millimeters at the minimum you probably want it to go down to 0 0.04 just so that you can at least test to see if if you are just if you're too tight and then you're also going to need an assortment of shims. We sell an assortment of SIL shims at Piston Portage website. Um, you get a ton of shims in a big bag, and none of them are marked. So that's where the uh, dial you know, the dial caliper comes into play, so that you can determine the actual size of the shims when you're picking the shim that you need to shim your gearbox. And now I want to go over what exactly you're going to measure when you are shimming your gearbox. What you're actually measuring is you're gonna measure this beveled surface right here, the gap between that and your shim. Your shim rides like that. So when you're inserting the feeler gauge, you're actually inserting it between these two and you're measuring the gap between this, between this and this. So that should make it a little bit easier so I give you a, some type of visualization as what you're trying to do. All right, and now what to start with when shimming your gearbox. The first thing that I always start with is um, whatever shim was originally in the gearbox. And as far as when to shim the gearbox, any time that you replace any bearings in the gearbox or the, uh, or the uh, lay shaft itself, basically any time that you're servicing the gearbox, you have to at least check what the gap is um, and then at that point determine if you need to replace it you know replace the shim with something a little bit bigger or smaller depending so that's when you need to shim the gearbox as far as how much to shim your gearbox the gaps are as follows um, if you're doing a standard four speed gearbox you're going to shim from 0 0.07 millimeters to 0.3 millimeter gap and that's the gap you measure with your feeler gauge. And then if you're doing a Cyclone or a Kermes 5-speed gearbox, the specs are 0 0.05 millimeter to 0.25 millimeter. And you always want to try to get it towards the smaller end of the spectrum without going past it. And that's primarily due to uh, better uh, part wear, uh, more precise shifting, things of that nature. As far as how to shim your gearbox or how to determine what the correct shim is, let's assume that you put your gearbox together and this is a two millimeter shim and you measured it with your uh, dial caliper. And then when you go in with your feeler gauge and you measure this, uh, you know, this gap right here and you determine that what you ended up with was a 0.356 millimeter. And as we can see from our specs here, that is out of spec. So determine what the correct spec or what, what shim you should ideally be able to hopefully find in your set or as close to possible, you're gonna to need to do a little bit of really simple math. So assuming that we start with a two millimeter shim and then we measured a 0.356 millimeter gap. So you take the two millimeter shim Add that to the 0.356 millimeter gap, and that is going to give you the total available space. So that's basically the entire space between uh, this bevel, you know, this edge right here, and the and uh, first gear. So, so that's your total available space. So then you take your total available space and as I said before, you want to try to get it towards the tightest 
end of the spectrum, which for a standard four speed gearbox is going to be 0.07. So you're going to take 2.356, your total available space, minus the desired gap. And that number that you're going to get from that, and in this, you know, demonstration is going to be 2.286. That is the maximum size shim that you can put in there. Um, if you were to get anything bigger than that, it's going to be too tight and you will not be able to get your, you know, 0 0.07 feeler gauge in there. And, uh, and then it's, you're going to have premature wear in your gearbox components. So now if you want to figure out what your total gap or what your total shim possibilities are going to be, you can take your two point three five six and you can minus your max gap which is 0 0.30 millimeters and that's going to give you 2.056 um and that millimeters and that's your minimum shim width so you need to find a shim that is somewhere between 2.056 millimeters and 2.286 millimeters um, you definitely want to try to get as close to this number as you can without going past it um, but some, you're going to end up somewhere in, inside this range, you know, depending on what shims that you're able to find in, in your collection. So now I'll, uh, show you a quick demonstration of, uh, actually measuring the, the shim gap on a gearbox. This particular scooter has got a five speed gearbox in, in it. So the lower threshold on it is actually point. 0.05 millimeters, not the 0 0.07 that you use in a four-speed gearbox. So what I, you know, I set it to the lowest threshold I could get it, and that would be 0 0.05. So I have a special little feeler gauge at, from my time working at motorcycles, and that I can just slide that in there, and that's a 0 0.05. And now if I go to the other side, which is a 0 0.08, that it's still pretty tight, but it goes in there still. Um, from there, I can go to a 0.1, and I can't get that in there, as you can see. So now I know that, and that's as close as I could get, was a 0 0.08. So very close to the lowest threshold. I can't even get this in here now. What this? Yeah, that's just too much. So. And hopefully now you understand how to shim a Lambretta gearbox. You understand that it's not an intimidating job and not something that should be avoided, but actually something that you should uh, take a lot of care just to make sure that it's set up correctly every time you're in it. Thanks for joining us and don't forget to subscribe.